and Deuteronomy and Matthew and Luke, uh, that mankind is not going to live by bread alone. But he goes on to explain to us that we're going to live by every word. Now that's a mouthful. And I still don't think it sunk in even though I've preached it several times here at this church. Every word. Does anybody know how many words is in the Bible? Well, I'll leave it up to you to find out. There's a lot of words in that Bible. But he said we'll live by every one of them. And there is one thing amongst other things, but one thing in particular that I hope to drive into the hearts and souls of folk that come to this church. I want to show you and teach you that there truly is power in every word of this book. So we have started a series sometime back called The Power of Every Word, and that's where we'll be going this morning. But the word we're going to talk about is actually one letter. Oh. Now, I'm not going to get technical and give you all the Greek and the Hebrew and what happened to the H and all that. But do you use the word O? Oh. You see, I bet you've read it many times in the Bible. But probably went on past it in a hurry. But when you study scripture, it'll do you good to slow down every once in a while and know what you read. So did God mess up? Now it's in there a bunch of time. Probably just over the weekend, I, I probably looked at a thousand verses that talked about the word O. Even talked about it with somebody and they said, well, it's a letter. I said, yeah. It's the 15th one, but it's also a word. But they argued with me. I said, uh, well, you need to understand the word O. Oh, it means something uh, to, with excitement or an emotion. Something that is out of the ordinary. Emotionally, it's ramped up a little bit. Let me help you out. Have you ever heard some horrible news? I heard it a while ago when the request came in about the young fella that passed. Oh, Lord. Why put an O oh in front of Lord? Well, it's got an emotion to it that our heart is heavy. And so we say, Oh, my Lord. Or, oh, my soul. You ever had anything frustrating that you've been dealing with and the word, oh, came out? You see, it is a word. I remember a few months ago when I went out, the weed eating mo ain't the thing out yonder would crank. Well, I responded, oh, oh, Lord, I need you. Preacher, you prayed to the Lord about your mechanic. You better believe I did. I'm telling you, two weed eaters, two lawnmowers, a tractor, and three chainsaws would not crank. Believe it. I don't, it don't matter to me if you believe it or not. Boy, I sat down in that seat, and I scratched this side of my head and that side of my head. And then I thought, well, I guess I better call the mechanic. I'm telling you the truth. Pray for every single piece of equipment I had individually. I'm just telling you what it is. 
one fired up. I said, well, thank you, Lord. Might as well try the other one. Thank you, Lord. And they say, you know, they're filling the air with carbon monoxide. <laughs> but you see, up to that point, there was an emotion that I had. There was an O in there. Now, it bothered me uh, that some of this stuff was expensive and I didn't know if it was tore up. How bad was it messed up? Was I going to have to pay for something else to get it replaced? So there was an emotion involved. But when God intervened and turned it around, there was still an emotion. So I was, y'all ain't want to help me. I was able to use the word O, but in two different ways, but the same word. So we want to look at O this morning in the Bible. What could God do with one little letter and one little word? And for those of you that don't think that he could do a lot with you, I want you to know if he was to allow me, I done and figured up how long it would take to preach the O messages. And from best I could figure, it would take right at 73 sermons. just to cover what God can do with just an O. I wonder how much of this book do we use? You see, we get in the valley and we wonder how to get out of it, but I want to tell you there's a way. We get problems in our lives and we wonder how to deal with it, but I want to tell you uh, there's a way. Uh, we get situations that come that tear us up uh, and we wonder where our help is going to come from. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, there is a way. Uh, I tell people and they argue with me, uh, but you will not ever have uh, a situation in life uh, that comes your way uh, that is not written in God's holy word. Uh, uh, you'll never have a trial uh, that God uh, ain't got a way to take care of it. Uh, you'll never have a burden uh, that is too heavy uh, for the Lord to lift. Everything you need in life is in God's holy word. Every direction you need is in God's holy word. It'll tell a man how to be a man. A woman how to be a woman. A child how to be a child. A church how to be a church. Hey, a husband how to be a husband. A wife how to be a wife. He'll tell you everything that you should do and everything that you shouldn't do. He'll give you one He'll give you blessings. He'll lift you up. He'll tear you down. He'll break you apart. He'll put you back together. But it is all in the Word. We send our babies to school and pay a professor or a teacher to explain to them that we all got monkey blood or ever evolved. But if we went by the word, we could teach class in about two seconds. God did it. Let's move on now. Where that grasshopper, God did it. How that elephant got a long trunk? Well, God did it. How does that hummingbird flap his wings 80 times in a second? Well, God did it. How does that bumblebee fly? Well, God did it. How does the rain fall? Well, God did it. How does the lightning come? Well, God did it. You see, when you use the word of God, it clears up all the questions and it gives us the answer and even things you're not sure about. Trust God took care of it. I have never laid my eyes on one of them teeny tiny microorganisms that's way down yonder in the deep part of the ocean. Oh, Lord. I'll preach in a minute. Well, the other night I seen a little animal show. They wanted to follow one of them whales. I forgot what kind he was. 
So they spent millions. Good to see you this morning, by the way. Uh, they spent millions on one of these big fancy submarines. They had walls in it, yay thick, designed to handle the water pressure that they thought this whale might dive to. Because they said there ain't no way I wish somebody will get a little life in here this morning. They said there ain't no way that whale's going to go past such and such level. So that man got behind the old joystick on that little submarine. And wouldn't you know one of them old whales showed up. I know God sent him that way. It was show and tell. It was, it was show and tell time. Preacher, I don't know about that. He don't talk to the fish. Well, if you ever see Jonah, have a conversation with him. And I'm afraid he might straighten you out. I want to tell you, God has a conversation with everything. Everything knows who God is. Grass knows who he is. The birds know who he is. There ain't nothing that is anything that don't know who mighty God is. The only thing he ever made On this earth, that's got a problem with God, is the devil and those that live with him. Hello? Mankind is the one that has problems with God. That donkey didn't have a problem. That whale didn't have a problem. Them ravens didn't have a problem. But anyhow, that whale showed up. And then he turned his head straight down. I mean vertical, upside down. And that big tail, that man and that little son, millions and millions and millions of dollars, he gassed on it. I was having a good old time. I, I, I figured something was about to happen. I said, follow that whale. But after a while, you begin to hear some beeping going on in that sun. A warning light come up. He cut the high power lights on and you can still see that whale. And that sun right beside him. And that commentator with that whale will slow up in a minute. He can't get no deeper. He's going to max out it. And then all of a sudden, the, the old driver said, Now, wait a minute. We got to stop right here. We have reached our limit and we can't go any further. If we go any further, the pressure of the water will just smash us like a tin can. And meanwhile, that spotlight was still on that well and he just went out of sight. And that smart man tried to explain that thing. And here was his explanation. Oh, 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 let me tell you something. I can't tell you how that well went deep, but I can tell you who made him that way. I can't tell you how God does what God does, but I can tell you it's by his hand that he does it. There is emotion in life. If you live life without emotion, you're not living life. O is put in the Bible to teach you and I what emotion and what feelings are. Toyota used to have a commercial. Oh, what a feeling. I want you to look in Genesis 27, verse 38, on God's blessings this morning. I'm going to show you a few feelings, a few emotions, a few things in life that we better deal with down here. Because if you don't deal with them down here, I promise you, you'll deal with them in the world to come. What about this word name of? And Esau 
uh, said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. Oh, my father, what in the world is going on there? And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Why on earth was Esau so emotionally charged right here? Does anybody know? Let me make it easy on you. Do y'all know how much power there is in realizing something? Nobody wants to help me. Let me ask you something. When you lock the door on your vehicle, thank you, thank you, and you realize the keys is laying in the seat. Are you hearing me? You realize the keys is laying in the seat. Does it do anything to you? Uh, ladies, well, when you're cooking that pot of rice, but you got distracted and your mind went somewhere and you realize, hello, anybody? Hello, anybody? Uh, you realize 10 minutes ago you should have cut the stove off, but it's been, do you realize, well, does it do anything to you? Well, let me ask you something. Uh, when you're driving down the highway uh, and you ain't really paying no mind uh, and you look up uh, and you realize uh, that there's somebody in your lane coming to you, does it do anything to you? There is a power in realization. Uh, and let me tell you something about Esau. He had his future all took care of. He had a birthright that was his to have. He had a father that was going to give him everything he needed to get through life. But Esau one day decided it wasn't that important to him. And he made a deal with his brother and a bowl of beans. Long story short, when it was over, so was his birthright. So was his blessing. I don't know what's wrong with us this morning. Maybe they ain't parents in here no more that blesses their children. Huh? Let me tell you something about my two. They've had hands laid on them. They've been prayed for. They have been blessed over. I didn't hire anybody that did it. I just got it in the master of the wind to make it. And let me tell you something, it's done. It will not be changed. It cannot be changed. And it'll stand the test of time. But let me tell you about Esau. He was promised his birthright. It was his and his alone. The blessing that his father was going to give him. But when he gave it away, I'm getting in trouble now. Hello, ain't nobody likes me this morning. I'm getting in trouble now. When he gave it away, when he said, Daddy, I don't want it. I just lost. Everyone saved, always saved out right there. I never listened to me. They gone. When he gave it away, when he said, I don't want it no more. He lost the right to what was once his. But when he realized what he did, I'm going to preach real to you. Somebody needs to hear this, and if you don't think I'll tell you, you're in the wrong church. Young ladies, put your eyes on the preacher just a second. 
There's been a many a young lady that laid down somewhere. That they should not have been with somebody that they shouldn't have been there with. Doing something that they should not have done. And when the deed was over, they realized. And their life was never the same again. There's been a lot of young men, Matthew. Seth. Look at me, young boys. There's been a lot of young men that went with the crowd that they were not supposed to go with. Doing some things that they should not have been doing. And when the deed was over, they realized what they had done and their life. I wish somebody would have me preaching this church. They realized what they had done and he so realized that he had threw it away and he begged his father to give it back. He begged his father for one more chance. He begged his father. I'll do it right this time. But reality had sunk in with that young man and he he never got it back. Oh, my father, the power of realizing that you have messed up. Hell, for those that don't know that word, because it ain't preached in church much. I have heard the modern teaching. Every once in a while, I might look up on some stuff and they like to give advice to modern day pastors on how to run the church. I don't look at it to, to find out what, I like to see what they're talking about this week. One thing they handled a couple weeks ago was that as modern day pastors, we need to stay away from that subject called hell. <sighs> Whatever you do, don't preach hell in the church. And the reason was that your finances. Hello. <laughs> Where's Gail out? Gail, I ain't going big time. It ain't going to happen. The mega churches ain't going to want me. Huh? If you preach hell. And you make the big spenders in the church upset, then your check ain't coming. And the tithes is gonna go down. Well, let me tell you something. They ain't an ATM in hell. And when you get to hell, all you gonna be saying is, oh, my father, give me one more chance. Give me one more time. The hell is gonna be full of people that have realized that they have waited too late. They're gonna realize that they have thrown it away. They're gonna realize that they have sold God out. They're gonna realize that they have failed in this life. And it's gonna be a powerful, huh? It's gonna be a powerful thing, but it'll be too late. Esau would have gave them beans back. But it was too late. Church, are you helping me this morning? That prodigal son, he said, Daddy, I got some things that belong to me, don't I? And I got some things that's going to be mine. He said, yeah, you do, son. He said, Daddy, give it to me. Is, this, is somebody listening to me this morning? Daddy, give me what's mine. Son, you should wait. Daddy, give it to me. Son, you ain't ready. Daddy, hello, ain't nobody want to help me. But I feel the Holy Spirit in here this morning. Uh, son, you really should wait. You ain't ready. Daddy, give me what is mine. Son, I'm going to ask you one more time. Would you please hold off? You're not ready. Daddy, 
give me what is mine. Take it, son. But before you leave home, I want you to know something. You see, we got a wrong impression on God. Sure. Lord, have mercy. Give me strength, Holy Ghost. I hope I don't get a thumb up on this. I hope they all go down. I do. I do. And let me know I got a hold of somebody. You see, let me tell you something. We got a wrong impression on God Almighty. We think we can have churches and have mess and junk and trash inside the church and God will just show up and walk around in the trash pile and we'll all have church. We think that if we put trash in the White House that God's just gonna, hello, anybody wanna help me? We put trash in the church. We put trash in the schoolhouse. We put trash in the courthouse and we think that God is gonna get in the trash pile and have church with us and go to school with us but I want to tell you something about trash God don't hang out in a trashy church or in a trashy country he told that boy I'll be right here Huh? Hello, I wish somebody would smile at me. Boy, son, offspring, fruit of my loins, I'll be right here. Why didn't his daddy go with him? Right now in this county, yeah, the Bible Belt County, right now in Whiteville, yeah, right here in this little place we call home. Did you know they're trying to decide whether or not to open the doors to position in the church the homosexual? Preacher, you preach on homosexual, I did too, but well, let me make it easy for you. Do you see this wood box? Roy, get your camera on here. Do you see this piano? Uh, Roy, get your camera up here. Do you see this choir? There's classrooms in the back. Did y'all know that? There's a door greeter out there this morning. Did y'all know that? There's folk in the back running equipment this morning. Did you know that? There's women leaders in this church. Did you know that? There's children leaders in this church. Did you know that? There's lay members in this church. Did you know that? Well, I want to make this clear for everybody. Any and every one of them positions that I just mentioned is off limits to the drunkard, to the druggard, to the homosexual, to any that is lost and undone. I don't care if you can beat the keys off that piano if you ain't born again and your name written in the land book of life. You ain't playing it in this church. I want to tell you something. I don't care if you're Michael Bolton, Liberace, Elvis Presley, if you got a voice that sounds like a hummingbird, if you ain't born again, you ain't welcome in that choir. Don't even ask. <laughs> Preacher, why? You don't want them kind of folk in the church? Yes, I do. I wish this morning, I wish this morning we was packed with inefficient, drunk, dopehead, homo men, homo women. I wish the caravan of atheists would pull up. Uh, I'm telling you, I wish all the White House staff, I, I wish everybody I would love to do would just show up. You are welcome 
in God's house, but you cannot drag God into your junk. Now when you get saved and you get born again, then you got a right to play your daddy's pen. Oh, I left that out, didn't I? You got the right to sing in your daddy's choir. You got the right to teach in your daddy's class. But until he's your father. But we try to drag God through junk and trash. They tried to drag him to the White House a few weeks ago. And then prayed with a woman and all these other gods. I want to tell you, God, God laid out of that prayer. His daddy told him, son, I'll be here where you left me. And that boy left home and that pocket was jammed full. I'm telling you, he had a wad and he was ready for the town. Ain't nobody here knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he was ready to have a good time and live it up. There ain't nobody in here even got a clue what I'm talking about ever. I'm telling you, he left town and here come Bob and Mike and Alex and Hank and Pudro. Here come every friend he didn't even know he had. I'm telling you, he was the, come on boys. I'm telling you, hey, let's do the old peacock strut. And they had a time. Boy, he was the best man in town. Everybody loved him. Everybody thought he was the top. Hey. Oh! Oh! How much you say I owe you? Oh! I got a problem. I'm out of money. Uh, Frank, John, Billy Bob. Now all of a sudden, all his friends is gone. Nobody wants to help him. I almost feel old fashioned this morning. Now all of a sudden realization comes in. The power of realizing something happened to that young man. He said, well, they were using me. They really didn't love me. They... You know a bad feeling? To wake up and realize you've been used, but you done and done some things uh, that you can't change. Yeah, I wish at least two people would say amen in this church. Uh, let me tell you, this young man realized that all his friends was gone, all his buddies was gone, and nobody was there with him, and now he was dead broke, and he was all alone, and reality ripped the heart of that young man. He said, I need a job, I need some food, I need some money, and the man said, I got one opening. I got one opening. It's in the hog pit. I made it clear to this church what's in the hog pit. Uh, uh, but we modernize the day of folks even preach the hog clean, the hog pen's clean. No. Let me tell you something as a backyard, barnyard preacher. In the hog pen is hog. They don't do but one thing. They eat. And then they get shed. Hello. Hello, boy. Look out. I ain't going to be on the magazine this week. Uh, then they get rid of all that day and they don't care where they get rid of it at. That's where this young man ended up going. And he would have. He would have eaten the same food that the hogs was eating. But then the power of O showed up. And he realized What in the world am I doing 
one in this hog pit. Have you ever woke up somewhere and wondered why you were doing that? Anybody in this church? I wish I had some normal people here this morning. Uh, have you ever done something and wondered why in the world? You ever let me tell you something? That young man said, My daddy. Oh, the Lord just won't let it go this morning now. You know the problem with today? Greta, a lot of the daddies a lot of the daddies hello a lot of the daddies would have been right there with Junior. Partying with him. Terry, if I wasn't wet, I'd hug you right now. I want to talk to somebody. And I want to talk to some daddies right fast, and then I'll move on. And by the way, I didn't study this last night. This is hot off the press. It's smoking. Let me tell you what the problem would have been today. Jake, the daddies would have been there with their boy having a good time because daddy's still wanting to act 21. Huh? Daddy's still wanting to do the things he did. In fact, today, you got so many daddies and their boys partying together, drinking together, having a good time together. Vote me out. Thun me down. Do what you want to do. But you will not stop the power of God's holy word. Let me tell you something about this boy. This young man, that prodigal son, he knew not to look for daddy in the hog with somebody. He knew that he knew he knew not to look for daddy in the hog pit. He knew daddy wasn't gonna be where he was right now. Cause this is what he realized. And this is what he said. I got a daddy that is back. It's all right if you raise your hand in here. It's all right if you wave at him every once in a while. I got a daddy that is back home. I'll go home to him. But when I go home this time, woo, I'm going to say, Daddy, I ain't worthy for you to be my daddy no more. I ain't worthy. For you to call me son. But daddy I know you love me. But if you just give me a job. Like a old servant. I'll thank you daddy. And do you know where that boy. Found his daddy. Right where his daddy left him. But on that faithful evening. When his boy. Come walking down the road. His daddy realized something. I wonder what he might have said that day. Every day. Oh. Not today, honey. Oh my, ain't nobody in here ever says oh my. Oh me, not today, but in that next day. Oh, y'all didn't hear that, did you? Oh. His daddy did. He throwed his arms around that boy that still had that stuff that come out the hog pins on him. That boy that still smelled 
like the hogs. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him and he said, get him some new clothes. Get him a ring. Get him a shoe. Put a robe on him. Wash the grime off of him. Because he realized my son was dead. But now he's alive. There's a power in realizing. Lord have mercy. Huh? That rich man. He opened his eyes in hell. And he realized. He realized. It was too late. I wonder who will go to hell today. I wonder who will go to hell today. Only to realize. That they waited too late. Preacher, I don't like that kind of preaching. You could be easier. No, I just got to tell you how it's in the book. Folk in hell realized they messed up. Folk in hell realized they made a bad mistake. Folk in hell realized, realized that they have wasted all their opportunity. They are teenagers in hell right now. There's daddies in hell right now. There's mamas in hell, grandpas in hell, grandmas in hell. And all of them realize they wasted their opportunity. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Esau, Esau wasted his opportunity and he realized it was too late. And he said, oh, my father, Book of Judges, the 16th chapter, verse 28. Samson called unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord God, the strongest man to ever live. He realized something. Read it again. Samson called unto the Lord and said, Oh, Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once. Oh, God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Do you know what happened to Samson? He got a woman. That he should not have got. Uh oh. I want you to know God should be the one that directs us in life. And if you're a mom and daddy that don't, you, know, you don't know how to lead your sons and daughters to who they're supposed to have, then you need to get in touch with the Lord. Samson laid his head in the lap of somebody that he shouldn't have been laying his head in their lap. And he got to playing with the Lord. And he thought that God was with him. He thought the Lord was with him, Sister Mark. You see, he had already jumped out the bed once when the lie said, Samson, the Philistines is coming. God, where they at? Samson, the Philistines are coming. God, where are they at? But that last time, when he told her, just give me a little trim, and I'll be like any other man. Well, what he didn't realize that his wife took that thing to heart. And while he drifted off to sleep, she gave him a good old haircut. And when he woke up, all he heard was, Samson, 
the Philistines uh, be on you. And this time, the power a realization hit that man and his arms felt like they didn't have the power. His legs felt like he didn't have the power and the enemy took his eyes. Church, it's a dangerous thing to think. Huh? To think that God is with you only to realize that he's not. How many people today will think that God is with them only to have realization? Preacher, how in the world can you know God's with you? I'm glad you asked. Well, I thought somebody at least amen by now. Uh, when God convicts your heart and the power of conviction comes on you and you realize that you are a lost soul and you ask him to forgive you of your sins and you believe on him as the son of God, as Jesus Christ, him that went to Calvary, him that died, and him that rose again. When you get that, when you become born again, you can know that you know that you know that you are a child of God. That's how you know God is with you. I'm going to tie this off. Samson was in trouble. And he realized that God had left him. Go with me if you would to 1 Kings the 19th chapter verse 4. Did any of y'all ever make stuff hard on yourself? Three of you. I'm going to try it again. Is there anybody in this church that you ever make things hard on you? Anybody ever make something out of nothing? Well, Lord have mercy. First King 19 verse 4. Uh, but he himself well, went a day's journey into the wilderness and he came and he sat down under a juniper tree. Double dot colon. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For I am not better than my father. Y'all know who that was talking? Only one of the baddest men you ever read about in the Bible. Huh? Only one of the most powerful men you ever read of in Scripture. His name was Elijah. The same man that called down fire. I just seen how this service is going to end. But we got to get there first. This man named Elijah that parted the Jordan River and didn't get no mud on his shoes. Huh? This man named Elijah that when he walked up to 450 prophets, he said, let's play a little game. Let's play a game called send down the fire. And the first God that lights the match, we'll let him be God and y'all can go first. That same man, that same man that come down from the mountain and he turned in his shirt tail and said, you better hope you got a fast horse cause we're going to Jezreel and on foot. Yeah. All right, anyhow, that same man alive. For 40 days, he ran in the woods hiding from Jezebel. He thought he was the only prophet left. It worried him so bad. It wore him out so bad that God sent a catering service from heaven. Huh? Huh? 
to feed him. God looked over at them angels and said, Go down, y'all. Bake that man some food. Give him some water. Elijah eat and went right back to sleep. God said, Wake him up again and feed him again because the journey he's on. Oh. Oh, Lord. But what Elijah didn't realize, there was over 7,000 that he didn't even know about. But he had forgot to remember that God has all authority and God has all power. Now, church, a lot of us make things hard on ourselves. We bring trouble in our lives that we should not have to deal with. We'll grab worry by the neck and make it go with us. Am I talking to anybody? We'll grab fear by the shirt collar. Am I talking to anybody? And we'll make fear go with us. Worry will be walking by our house and ain't even coming by. And we'll run out the front door, bear hug it, and drag it. Hurting, sorrow, anxiety, frustration, all them words that in and shun. And we'll say, you going with me today? Where are we going? I'm going to stay in the valley. I'm going to waller in my misery. Now come with me. Elijah wallered in misery. Oh, is a powerful word. And I want them to get this song ready, but I'm going to hit you with one of the biggest O's you ever read in your life. If you would turn with me to 2 Kings, the first chapter. The 13th verse. If you'll turn it up just a little bit. And he sent again a captain of the third fifth with his fifth. Oh, it's coming. I know y'all don't know where I'm going with it. And the third captain of the 50 went up, came and fell on his knee before Elijah. Oh, I thought I was just preaching about him. And besought him and said unto him,
bodies and a hundred of his men was already dead. And he said, oh, man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50, thy servants, hello, 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 be precious. They were there to get him off the mountain. But he said, we your servants. I want to ask you something this morning. Right now in the power of God's Holy Ghost, do you realize that every breath in your life is fully in the hand of God Almighty? Do you realize this morning that every heartbeat you have is numbered by the hand of God Almighty. It's a powerful thing to realize that your life is not your own. Sister Dolores, I can tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I like that answer. Ah, what did you say? What did you say to me? So I heard you. Me ah, God you know what she said? The most powerful thing you could ever do in your life, almighty man, almighty woman, is to realize that there is a God in glory and every part, every piece, of your life is under his full control and one day you'll meet him to give an account for what you have done with the life God has given you oh Oh, I think that's a fitting way to end this sermon. Oh, I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. Lord, I pray your conviction on all of us that need it. Your drawing hand. Lord, would you make